Hello again. So if you know me, you know that I like Harry Potter and this thing has been bouncing around my head for a while. So I just want to get it out in a video. I've looked around online and I can't see anyone that has said this, which is crazy because I feel like Harry Potter has been around for a long time. So someone should have at least thought of this. I'm not saying I'm the first person. I'm just saying I can't find anyone else. So maybe I'm just bad at looking. Essentially, I think the invisibility cloak has a hidden power, which no one has figured out unless someone else has already figured it out and I'm just coming to this really late. <laughs> anyway, we already know that the invisibility cloak is, it makes you invisible. That's the thing that it does. But it's better than other invisibility cloaks because it doesn't wear out and it doesn't get holes in it and it stays invisible no matter what you throw at it. It's, it's a really good invisibility cloak essentially. Obviously this is only gonna be based on the books because the films are just not that great when it comes to adapting all the information from the books. They're good to watch, but if you haven't read the books, the films don't actually make any sense at all. So the invisibility cloak obviously was made by one of the three brothers or given to one of the brothers by death, depending on whether you believe the story or not. I'm just gonna be talking about it as though death actually gave it to the brothers, but it doesn't really make a difference whether you believe that death gave it to them or whether they made it themselves. It's, it's basically the same thing. So the first brother was given the elder wand, which is the best wand in the world. It kills anything. It, it's, it's good. The second brother was given the resurrection stone, which can bring anyone back to life. And the third brother obviously given the invisibility cloak. So obviously the story of the three brothers tells you about how the third brother is like the best brother. If it's like the three little pigs, he's the one that builds his highest set of bricks because the bull can't blow it down. Death can't kill him. If the first brother wants to conquer everyone and kill whoever he pleases. The second brother wants to bring back the people that he loves from the dead. And the third brother just wants to hide from death. So he gets the invisibility cloak, which is really nice. It's a nice, it's a nice story. You can just, if death can't see you, he can't kill you, which is really poor on death's part. That's your job, man. You saying if you can't see someone, you can't kill him. The story says the third and youngest brother who was the most humble and wise did not trust death. He asked if he could be given something that could enable him to go forth from this place without death being able to follow. Death most reluctantly gave him his own invisibility cloak. Then it goes on to say that the other two brothers died while the third brother was able to go his whole life without death being able to find him. There's a lot to unpack there, so let's just go through what each of the Hallows do in terms of the story. The wand kills people, so it creates death. The stone, it brings people back from death, so it reverses death. The cloak shields you from death, it hides you from death. If you look at it from the point of view of like people actually making those items, what is, what is the point? What does that link in to do with death? You just got a good cloak so you can hide from people? Going through your life, that's kind of useless. Like someone can still kill you if they know that you're there. And we know that people can hear you underneath the cloak. So it's not really the best in terms of hiding you from death. So what does that mean? I think it means that the invisibility cloak is actually able to repel the killing curse. As in, if you are wearing the invisibility cloak, you cannot be killed by a Vatikadabra. And I have evidence to back it up. <laughs> like I said, the wand kills and the stone reverses, so it only makes sense that the cloak would prevent you from being able to die. If you look at the story and death being unable to find the third brother, that makes sense as a kind of metaphor for death literally being unable to reach the third brother because he's wearing the invisibility cloak. Anyone that tries to kill him is sought because they, they can't kill him because he's under the cloak. It also adds up to the cloak being as powerful as the other two and actually having a relationship with death. Because if you read the story, basically as it's written, the cloak doesn't really have much to do with death, whereas the other two Deathly Hallows actually do. So the three Hallows together are supposed to make you the master of death. And I get how that works with the wand and the stone, because if you can kill anyone and bring anyone back to life, then yeah, you can master the death of other people. But being invisible doesn't really come into that at all. So. How does that add up? But if you look at it as though the cloak prevents people from being able to kill you with the killing curse, then yeah, you'd, you'd be the master of death. You can kill anyone. You can bring anyone back to life. And also no one can kill you. You are truly the master of death if you have the three Deathly Hallows, one that makes death, one that reverses death, and one that prevents death. But the cloak also prevents death of pretty much anyone, anyone you can fit underneath it, which is why it is the best hallow because it can work on not just you, but anyone you want it to work on. And I know what you're thinking, the invisibility cloak is shown to be not resistant to spells cast against someone wearing it. But the only time that actually happened, it wasn't to kill Harry. It wasn't a killing curse, so the cloak couldn't repel it. Bear in mind, I'm not saying that the cloak can repel all spells, it can literally only repel the killing curse. But that doesn't take away from how powerful it is. I'm just saying that if it can repel the most powerful spell, then it's the most powerful cloak, whether or not, you know, it stops you from getting Bonnie binded or not. And if you don't believe me yet, that's fine, because my third and final piece of evidence is the nail 
in the coffin because Dumbledore felt really guilty about James and Lily's death and why would he do that when he went through as much effort as he could to keep them safe because he knows that he basically caused it. He took the cloak from James just before he was killed and he feels really guilty about that probably because he knows that if James had the cloak he wouldn't have died. So Dumbledore said it was a cloak the likes of which I'd never seen. Immensely old, perfect in every respect. And then your father died, and I had two howls at last, all to myself. His tone was unbearably bitter. The cloak wouldn't have helped them survive, though, Harry said quickly. Voldemort knew where my mum and dad were. The cloak couldn't have made them curse-proof. True, sighed Dumbledore. True. Now, I know that Dumbledore says true here, but Dumbledore is nothing if not a liar. He lies to Harry literally all the time. I don't think it's a sigh of relief. I think it's a sigh of... Oh, I'm lying to this kid because he thinks I didn't kill his parents. If James and Lily had the cloak, they could have hidden under it with Harry and avoided Voldemort and been Avada Kedavra proof. And Dumbledore knows that because he knows that the cloak doesn't just hide you from people. It literally does what it says in the story. It hides you from death. Another point to this is the fact that the cloak is a good invisibility cloak, but it's not perfect. You can be seen on the Marauder's map with it. Uh, Moody can see through it with his eye and Dumbledore has apparently used Hominum Revealio spells to see Harry when he's underneath the cloak. It's just an invisibility cloak that doesn't really age. It's not that great. It's nothing that's bringing people back from the dead or killing literally anyone you want unless you see it as a cloak that literally hides you from death, that stops you from being killed by Avada Kedavra, that stops the most powerful curse that does something that literally nothing else in the wizarding world can do, just like the other two Hallows. There we go, I have solved everything in Harry Potter. The invisibility cloak can stop you from being killed because it's a Deathly Hallow and it only makes sense. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Let me know in the comments or don't, whatever, cool.